You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 21st, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where hearing from people who care about real issues and speaking complete sentences for four straight days was a breath of fresh air. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Happy anniversary, Blue Gal. Hey, thank you very much. We're... Uh, we celebrated our ninth wedding anniversary on Wednesday. We did. And uh, it is the uh, pottery anniversary. So I put a fifth of scotch in a clay pot and Drift Glass mm-hmm. put a beautiful writing pen mm-hmm. and some yarn in a virtual clay pot. And mm-hmm. we celebrated. And uh, so thank you so much. It was a very lovely it, day. It's like it's like the the story of how you cook a duck. You know, you put yeah. a brick in the duck's <laughs> stomach and you bake it in the oven for four hours at 400 degrees and then throw the duck away and eat the brick. So you just throw the pottery away and save right. what's inside and of it. and save what's inside of it. Mm-hmm. And it's a good gift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and uh, your gift was lovely to me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, it, was, it was nice to have an anniversary on the week of the Democratic National Convention. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it's my wife's a writer. And uh, there's yeah. a lovely local artist collective that sells handmade stuff. And a handmade pen seemed appropriate, especially since this week there was so much to write about. There Google. was so much to write about. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, we're not going to go through day one through day four for we're not? you. Okay. No. Right. <laughs> as far as I know. I mean, I think there's some highlights we should talk about. But let's talk overall Yes. about what a remarkable job the – Behind the scenes people, the tech people, mm-hmm. the filming people, the film editors, video editing takes forever. Uh, the fact that they had people from all over the country speaking uh, with various microphone setups and various uh, lighting issues and everything went from from my perspective remarkably smoothly. Yeah, it was. And uh we do have all the tech people on our side. I think that's that's it. that was shown during the Obama years, and that's showing up this uh, year as well. I believe the person who was waving the baton, the, the sort of organizing and technical baton, was Stephanie Cutter. So, oh, okay, uh, big yeah. big ups for her. Um, uh, just uh, just for organizing this thing that has never been done. How before. do you how do you coordinate hundreds of people to put yeah. this together? Right, yeah. right. Uh, it was it was very well done. And uh, that is a um, tremendous standard to have to uh, meet up to next week for the Republicans. I don't. That's 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 why they hate us, Blue Gal. We we keep Uh, we keep raising the bar, and they keep thinking uh that's not fair. So Uh, I'm looking forward to, like, for example, I'm looking forward to Donald Trump's moment helping a child so that he can be (laughs) like that, and it'll it'll be like. The Saddam Hussein hostage tape, you know, him just petting the hair of some poor, unfortunate kid whose father just volunteered him his tribute and looking <laughs> terrified, like, you're a good boy, you, you, MAGA hat for you, and just, oh, God. That'll be, that'll be twenty one ninety five. <laughs> yeah, because, because he doesn't have any human feelings. He doesn't no, know how to no. relate to human beings as humans. And so whatever attempt there's going to be to try to make him appear like he's not a monster is going to come across like Saddam Hussein. Well, let me, let me, let me interrupt we with just a comment that you made actually on our anniversary morning. Uh Oh, Uh, as often is the case, you turned on morning Joe. I said, where's my goddamn (laughs) breakfast, right? Where's my goddamn (laughs) goddamn oatmeal. (laughs) I'm supposed to make it. Oh, that's right. Uh, And uh, there was Cory Booker and Cory Booker was talking about, uh, we shouldn't demonize the other side. Uh, <laughs> Did yeah. you hear that sound? Yeah. And uh, Drew Glass looked at the TV, everybody, and he said, but Corey, sometimes they're demons. Yes, here's, <laughs> there's the problem. <laughs> you know? And I thought immediately of Laura Ingram mm-hmm. and uh, Dinesh D'Souza and their hot takes every night Yeah, of, you know, 
Kamala Harris and just, you know, racism. And what was it last night? We, we turn, I flip over to Fox. Well, you, you, you know, sort of have for, to, Hugh, I mean, for, for comic relief. Yeah. And last night, um, it was Laura Ingram saying, and you know, Joe Biden is only ahead by four points in Pennsylvania. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> My husband only cheated on me nine times. Yeah. Okay. That's, hey, that's better than 12, I suppose. Sure. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Maybe maybe he's telling yeah. you something like, I'd rather stick it in a light socket than go to bed with you ever, ever again. <laughs> No, really, I, getting back to the Cory Booker thing, it does yeah. feel like um, the last reel of uh, The Usual Suspects, where the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was getting Cory Booker to say, come on, man, let's just hug it out. And everything will be yeah. okay. No, 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 no. There are very evil people in this country. They're they're mostly packed into one political party for convenient carrying purposes. Right. And they mark right. themselves with MAGA hats and Republican bumper stickers and and fealty to Donald Trump. And they're bad people. And, and we should stop pretending that they're not bad people. That's what scares me about the, you know, the war, the war is upon us. And then yeah, once yeah. this is over, once whatever happens in November happens, I, I, I'm hoping Donald Trump will no longer be president and there won't be blood in the streets to get him out of the White House. But then comes the peace. Yeah. And what happens when a whole bunch of Republicans head for the hills and change their T-shirts and a whole bunch of never Trumpers say, thank you. you you're, you're welcome. We won this for you. What yeah. happens when we who actually are the core of the party are sidelined once again or tempted to for uh, in order to make an armistice with the reasonable Republicans? I have no problem with making peace with all nine reasonable Republicans, but mm -hmm. that's all there are. And continuing to pretend that someone out there, there's a group of people out there who just can't quite make up their mind. And there's a group of Republicans who just, you know, the Donald Trump, who aren't going to snap right back to being racist assholes the minute November passes. Did, did you see the woman in Wisconsin who was interviewed outside and said, I'm so disappointed in Donald Trump. I voted for him yes. uh, in 2016. And I don't like the way he treats his wife and I don't like the way he tweets and I don't like the way he talks about people and I don't like the way he governs and I don't like how he's handled this pandemic and, and I don't think he has a plan for the economy. And here and so you're not going to vote for him, right? Oh, no, I'm going to vote for oh, him. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, there's her and there's a 10, 20, 30 million like her who yeah. are just bonded at the soul level to this horrible, noxious, racist party. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, I do. Uh, if you I'm... have that much awareness to say all of these things and then say, no, I'm going to vote for him. You'd have because to... I guess you've been programmed that the alternative is so much more horrible. Yeah, there, there's an automatic right. circuit in the brain that's that's mm -hmm. whatever, however badly you fucked up, liberals are worse. There's yeah. just, it's yeah. automatic. There there must be someone out there because the alternative is the, that as uh as Jesse Pinkman said in in Breaking Bad, I'm the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. You're the bad guy. Lady in Florida, lady in Wisconsin, you're the bad guy. You're the villain. And nobody, as as we've said before on many occasions, especially speaking about Alan Rickman, no nobody thinks of themselves as the villain. Right. No, and Alan Rickman woke up, you know, to play the villain that he had to play, whatever Hans it Gruber, was. Yeah, whatever it was, yeah. Hans Gruber or the Sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah. And said, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, ha, 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 twist my mustache, I'm going to do evil today. No. They have a motivation that says, I'm doing the right thing. And it's going to be great. And here, you know, that I have a wonderful reason for making sure yeah. that I kill so-and-so. And, and, and so, yeah. And, well, and the reason that precedes all of the insanity and all of the mm -hmm. the... the mm -hmm the worship of Sean Hannity and all the constant, yeah. you know, that we just keep turning Rush Limbaugh up louder to drown out all the, all reality is I must be the good person here. I must right, be the good right. person. Yeah. And since I'm the good person, whatever decisions I make must by definition be good decisions. Cause mm -hmm, I can't be, mm -hmm. I re, I can't be the, the, the caricature liberals that make, I, I'm not a racist. I'm not stupid. Yeah, you are. You're all those things. And you're worse than that because you are so desperate to, to keep reality at bay. That well, and I'm not a chump, country. right? Yeah, I wasn't exactly. taken advantage of. And they are. Yeah, they I are. knew They're what I was them. doing and it must be good because I wouldn't, I'm too smart to be taken advantage yeah. of in that way. Yeah. And so there's no chance so, they're ever going to become self-aware because with self-awareness. There's self no chance Steve Bannon stole my money. No. Right. And, well, that right. brings us to 
<laughs> build the wall scandal that's yeah. reporting yeah. into and we're going to take a brief detour from the convention and come right back to it but yeah this was um this was i believe there was a bible bitch moment hiding in the steve bannon <laughs> well i'm not going to do a full bible bitch but just the bible verse there is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed yeah and this build the wall thing liberals called this from carolee at crooks and liars to everybody at coast to digby to everybody's like wow the people who chanted mexico's gonna pay for it are now shelling over 50 to 100 bucks <laughs> of their own money to steve bannon to steve bannon this is a scam this is mm -hmm. you know and and uh when gofundme decided to return the money because they didn't raise a billion dollars i think they had a goal of a yeah. hundred million dollars and they didn't yeah. raise it and so they only raised 25 million and here comes the vet who's working with steve bannon saying that's okay you can transfer your donation over to our dot org oh okay and <laughs> that'd be great and people did okay and uh the instagram tiktok wife of this veteran who's clearly took advantage of the free plastic surgery. They use pla they use the money for plastic surgery for his wife. Yeah. It, it's 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 just a cartoon. It's just so a running cartoon. So you must be you cannot be the person that was that stupid to be scammed. Well, that's why there's, folks, there's right? there's a bunch of nice little old ladies out there who get conned every year and a bunch yeah. of them never call the cops because it would right. be to admit that oh my god, I'm the I'm that gullible little old lady. I yeah. gave away all of my money or most of my money or my social security or my credit card to that nice young man with the, with the pleasing manner. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, Oh shit, I'm a caricature. Yeah. And, and they'd yeah. rather not admit that to themselves. And and if it's their money, it's a tragedy and it's, it's a crime and the people do it should be prosecuted. But there's, um there's something going around on Twitter th this morning about the young man who, you know, in nickels and dimes, I guess, and lemonade stands, whatever, raised $20,000 to give to the build the wall fund. And, and it was, Where's this young man go to get his money back? Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. He looked like he was like 10 or 12. And I'd like to know, where do you go to get your get a different set of parents? Right. Yeah. So I'm sorry that this happened to this young man. There's a lesson to be learned. I hope he gets some of his money back. I really do. But the larger lesson is there's nothing, nothing that's going to happen to these people mm -hmm. that's going to ever change them. We're stuck with them until they drop dead. And that's... So keep waiting for the corner to be turned and the fever to be broken. There's a lot more people now than in, than there were in 2008 and 2012 who are like, nah, there's no fever. Yeah. <laughs> fever's never going to break. Because if fever's the fever not going to break, they're going to age out of the political process yeah, no. and that's going to be it. Right. Because they're right. all fever. And in point. the meantime, there's a whole bunch of democratic socialist vegans like our kids yeah. aging into the electoral process. Yeah. And hopefully the it tips, you know, but... Uh, let's get back to the convention. Yes. Uh, Steve M at No Mis More Mr. Nice Blog, one of our yes. favorite bloggers, yes. said there won't be a Braden Harrington, the 13-year-old boy who stuttered uh -huh. um, at the Republican convention. And uh, I don't know if you saw uh, Jonathan Chait's tweet about this. I did, uh, because Jonathan Chait is a heartless asshole. <sighs> And he, yeah, just, you know, my my heartless technocratic take is that Joe, basically Joe Biden has better things to do with his time than do giving than speech, do speech therapy for an individual for 13 like, year old. Wow. Wow. And I replied to him. I, I, I first wanted to just reply, go fuck yourself. But mm -hmm. then I thought better of it. And I thought hey, I re I deleted that. And I said, have you seen Facebook today? Yeah. Because there's a whole lot of, you know, I hate to be a trope here. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole bu bunch of middle class white college educated suburban women out there who have driven their kid to a speech therapist. Yes, they have. Or who are a speech therapist mm -hmm. or whose daughter is a speech therapist. And they looked at that kid and said, that's my kid. Yes. That's my uh, yep. proud moment. Mm -hmm. I can be proud of this boy mm -hmm. for the courage and the ability that he got and the the gratitude that he has mm -hmm. that he learned a couple of tips yeah. from a presidential candidate. This wasn't speech therapy. This was here's two things that I did. I read this book of poetry right. and I put pauses in my speeches to 
get me to slow down so I don't stutter quite so much. Yeah. Those are the two tips I have. It probably took him five minutes, but he took the time and he cared. And having a president who cares is going to be a, you know, 180 from what we have now. And well, this does remind me a lot. I mean, and this is something I think we talked about last week or the week before mm -hmm. is what happened when our former governor, Governor Hedge Fund, decided to cut autism funding on World right. Autism Day. World Autism Day, you know, yes. Which was like, you know, and, and I think he like cut museum funding on the museum grounds. So he, mm -hmm. he had mm -hmm. a real sense of, he had a real fuck you sense to everybody. And, mm -hmm. but he was going to come in here and be a businessman. He was going to do business things and he was going to cut taxes and he was going to let people prosper. And that's when a whole bunch of white suburban parents in Northern Illinois, who probably right. vote Republican, discovered that their child was going to be robbed of their support network. And suddenly, right. oh, no, 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 no. That's a bridge too far. I don't give a shit if you if you screw over poor people or brown well, people. Well, that was the letter in the to the editor in our paper was, my grandson has autism. Yeah. I voted for you. How dare you? Yep. And, and all the liberals reading that went, um, yeah. how, who's going to break it to him yeah. that government matters? And it, yeah. you are one disabled child away from needing government to defend yourself against medical costs, against a lack of schooling, a lack of opportunity. The government does that. Well, uh, I think I, I'm convinced it's on some level that uh, places like Jonathan Chait, you know, places like where he writes the New York Times, and the Washington Post, they hand out like cards every mm -hmm. couple of weeks and say, do a really shitty, hateful take on something. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. just get out there and just take a dump. Like, just shit on a kid, you know, kick a dog <laughs> and, and and tell people just be an asshole contrarian because we need to get our, our clicks our back click up. Our click rate. Our, our click rate. So up. go yeah. on, go yeah. and do something utterly indefensible, assholish, you know, and other, unlike Andrew Sullivan, who just does that every week because that's his nature. But, you know, just <laughs> yeah. go out and do something being, unforgivably Being an asshole awful. gets you clicks. It really yeah. does. Yes. I'm yes. a bold contrarian. No, you're just a dick. And I think that's what we are slowly starting to figure out is people who are just contrarian all the time rather than sort of coming to a contrary position because, you know, I was wrong and maybe the common knowledge, the, the common wisdom in this particular case is bad. People who are just contrarian dicks are that way, not because they believe a thing they say, but because it'll get them a gig. It'll mm -hmm. get them an asshole gig. Hey, everybody hates this guy. Let's put him on the New York Times op-ed page, Brett Stevens. So now you may not think I know you type these notes and you you may not think these two notes uh, are connected, but I see this as two sides of the same coin. Well, Chris Wallace on Fox News praised Do uh, Joe Biden's speech. Yes, he did. As enormously effective speech blew a hole in Trump's attempts to depict Biden as feeble. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is going to have to run against a candidate, not a caricature, said Wallace. OK. And what I saw in response to that on Twitter was what I always see whenever anyone on Fox jumps off the boat right. and starts speaking truth, which yeah. is there are a whole bunch of programming executives for Fox uh -huh. randomly on Twitter telling Fox News, fire that person. He should go to CNN. He belongs at MSNBC. Right. You know, we can get rid of the people we don't like because our network should only be supporting Donald Trump, period. And they're just right. used to that. And then we have Brian Stelter at Vanity Fair. Yes. Who is looking at the Fox, the actual programming people at Fox News, the actual people who put Fox on the air. Yes. And uh, Brian Stelter reports that there are Fox News employees who feel really bad about being trapped in a Trump cult. It's so sad. <sighs> That's so sad. I feel trapped in here. <laughs> And you noticed the writing of this, the I writing did. of how Stelter – explain what was going on with uh, how Brian Stelter wrote this article in Vanity Fair. Brian Stelter uh, is a – started off as a gossip columnist, a blogger mm -hmm. gossip columnist back in the uh, early blogging days. He'd get sort hard of – Hardworking. Let's be clear. Was, he was, was hardworking. He, yeah. he got all the scuttle about – there was going on you know, below decks at the networks and would report it and blog about it and was was an interesting read back in the you know, 2004, 5, 6 days. And he parlayed that into a, a regular gig. And that's fine. That's that's sort of a natural progression for people like that. Because he, he didn't report on anything that was ideologically offensive. He just reported on what people were saying. Right. Um, and his nature is to end every 
sentence with the cavuto question mark <laughs> you know i'm just and, asking the question i'm not it, really making a, val- a value judgment about anybody it, it right? would appear that donald trump is lying but other people say otherwise and <laughs> and he has this utterly passive and he asks like probing questions like is it possible that donald trump doesn't know how to tell the truth and just like phenomenally <laughs> obvious shit that anybody can see and then of course he gets very much like um jonathan shade he gets ratioed to death because people are like why are you this stupid? I mean, mm-hmm. are you just a bowl of pudding? Are, is that a, with two legs? Is that who you really are? Because everything about him is this passive, never judge anything, just ask a question about f- what the flagrant criminality and incompetence and treason of Donald Trump, all phrased in sort of, maybe it's maybe it's the case. I don't know, but maybe it's not. Who can, who can say? Which any halfwit could write the th- with a thesaurus tied behind their back. Any fool could do this. And yet in this article, he's very declarative. <laughs> he's like, yep, yeah, they're a bunch of assholes and this is what they think. And they, they think Sean Hannity's a fucking idiot. And I, he doesn't swear. I'm just translating it. But it was such a shock to see that when you move him off of Twitter and out of the CNN bubble and, and put him in a different venue, he is full of declarative sentences about who's right and who's wrong and who's terrible and who's stupid and who's, who's, uh, who's to blame, naming names. And you and I have written about this before. That uh, I wrote about this. Uh, there's there's always work at the post office. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Katie tour saying there are great people at Fox. There yeah, are just there some really great people there. No, there are people who have sold their souls in order to make a paycheck high enough right. to send their kids to private school in New York City. And have a career in television. That's which is, you know, for some people, that is their identity. And there is there is work. You can get an education degree. I don't think you need an education degree to substitute teach in the New York City yeah, public schools. Do that. Seventy dollars a day. You can, you know, you can you can live like that and and well, keep your soul to yourself and not be working for team evil. I did a little post on this that Satan's little helpers upset that hell has really gone to hell. <laughs> yes, exactly. Nobody working at Fox News for the last. 15 years should have any, and I'm talking down to the janitorial level. Right. I'm talking to people who, who change the light bulbs, who pull who the, answer the, the phones, yeah. The key grips. I'm talking to yep. everybody there. No one there should be operating under any illusion that you're other than a, a just a, a, an abattoir, a slaughterhouse, ideological mm-hmm. slaughterhouse. Mm-hmm. This is where integrity and truth go to die on purpose. It, so, so you can get monsters elected to office and so that you can feed the base the red meat they need to keep going every day. We have, again, another case of people who should all be fired. And Fox News should disappear from the earth as a blight, as a pestilence on this country. All not seeing themselves as the villain. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. trapped here. What are we supposed to do? I mean, you know, our hands are, are bloody and we've done terrible things and we really feel bad about it. But I've got a pension here and a 401k. What do you expect me to do? And I expect anybody with integrity to quit. The the, the parallel between Fox News and the Republican Party is just 100%. It's a whole bunch of people below decks, off the record, whispering, I really hate to hear. I wish the person in charge weren't like an ogre, who a monstrous racist ogre. But when it comes to actually – Who rapes women. But when it comes to doing shit about it, it's like, yes, sir, Mr. Hannity. Yes, sir, Mr. Trump. Whatever you want. Yes, sir, Mr. Ailes for years, for 20 years. Yes. So they're bad people, <laughs> and, yep. and it is incumbent upon people in – this is the other thing that everyone on this podcast by now knows bothers me – is on Twitter, uh, Christopher L. Hayes on MSNBC is extremely vocal about, god damn, these people in the media who just do blah, 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 who you know, take a position and they, they know better and they do – my question is always, why don't you name names, Chris? Why don't you point a camera at these people and say – it's Ben Dominic, who's the yeah. asshole. Uh-huh. Tucker fucking Carlson. And here's why he's this way. And the answer is, it was asked and answered. They yeah. they did that for a little while with Bill Crystal. Rachel Maddow used to work herself into a lather over what, why the fuck does Bill Crystal have a job? Oh mm-hmm. my God, this guy has been wrong about everything. His hands are covered with blood. He's an asshole. He's a liar. And, his, and he's been wrong forever. Why the fuck does he, oh, he's just been signed up to MSNBC? Never mind. Never mind, yeah. It's like, oh. Yep. And, and the problem with that 
is that it it completely destroys your credibility your as credibility. a member of the journalist. Yeah, yeah. If you can be told, yep. shut up about about Bill Crystal because he's on our team now. What else are you being to- told to shut up about? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because yeah. it, it's really important that bad people stop having their boot on the throat of the American media. And if you can't just say what's patently obvious to everyone as a fucking journalist, then you're not a journalist. You're just a, you're just a stenographer. Speaking of Roger Ailes, uh, who is obviously busy in hell serving Satan, um, there's a whole lot of Republicans that are really going to miss him next week at yeah. long last. Yeah, that's so true. That really is because true. Because at the very least, he could produce a show. Yes, he And could. the report is that <laughs> Donald Trump was watching the Democratic National Convention and calling his people, whoever they were, and saying, I want that. I want uh-huh. that on I want that on our convention. I want to have that at our convention. Like mm-hmm. I want all 50 states. I want individual videos of all 50 states yeah. by next week telling me how great I am. This is a convention you know, that's already in a week. <laughs> already been it's already had a venue cancel cancellation twice. Yeah. And have they've done no planning of any kind as far as anyone can tell. And it's just Donald Trump on the phone screaming at people to get him that blonde chick. Get right. me a kid who I can show something. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. I want a bunch of people singing. And it's just and, and you're right, Roger Ailes is roasting in hell right now, and mm-hmm. rightly so. But he did know how to produce a television show. Yes, he did. And they don't have anyone like that there anymore. I so, don't think so. Um, I don't, and right I don't now, you know, I don't know what Jared is doing. You know, Jared's probably been put in charge of it. So Well, and if you if you just see how they're acting, mm-hmm. um, you know, this since Joe Biden proved pretty definitively that he is not in cognitive decline. Yeah. <laughs> that he yeah, can right. string many, 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 many sentences together in a mm-hmm. fairly moving way, in a speech that was very good. Yes, right. On its on the face of it. Anybody giving this speech is a good speech. Joe Biden did a really good job, possibly the best speech of his career. Mm-hmm. I don't go back when to when he needed it. Yes. Yeah. I don't go back to the 1910s, so I don't know at the beginning of his career what things were like, but he's been in Congress a really long time. Yep. But he's this is a this was a really good speech, and you could tell he really meant it. And mm-hmm. so overnight, very much like um, um, when Kamala Harris was announced, mm-hmm. literally, you know, hours an hour later, it was nasty, nasty woman, nasty. Blah, 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 blah. All yeah. the racists came out of the woodwork on on Fox. So now it's well, anybody can read a teleprompter speech. Well. Yeah. Fuck you, your boss can't. <laughs> your boss is either stoned or under sedation or illiterate or doesn't want to sh- share with the world that he wears glasses. And he stumbles through every teleprompter speech. But what is it? Democrats don't love God. Yeah. Kamala Harris wasn't born here. And Joe Biden needs a teleprompter to tell a speech. It's Obama 2008. It's teleprompter birtherism Jesus. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, it, it really is. is. Absolutely. And, and you, you can just see them pawing through the garbage pile of all the shit they tried and failed to do in Obama and just shouting it at random because they don't <laughs> know, have no idea what else to do because their whole thing was Joe Biden's going to get up on stage and shit in his shoes and drool and they'll have to carry him off in a chair. And that never happened. Mm-hmm. So what's mm-hmm. plan B? Well, teleprompter birtherism <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And and we're going to have a great convention. It's going to be great. It's going to be the greatest convention ever. And again, the, the the thing you and I talked about before the podcast, I maintain is true, is that this is my uh, Jonathan Chait um, technocratic <laughs> shit take on, on the universe, <laughs> is conventions don't matter. Yeah. Generally speaking, and debates don't matter. I saw Hillary Clinton kick Donald Trump's ass over right. and over again in a debate, right. and it didn't matter. It didn't change any Republican's mind. I saw... George Bush get his head handed to it by John Kerry. Didn't change anything. Might have changed a few votes, but it didn't change the outcome of the election. And conventions don't move the needle at all because, first of all, networks don't cover them anymore. And there's no real business that's that's done there. There's no there's no drama. There's no there's a balloon drop and a bunch of speeches. This time it's different because this time the one thing that Republicans are running on is that Joe Biden can't stand up and give a speech. Right. Right. And they spent four days telling the gorgeous humane, chilling, awesome stories about who Democrats are and why we believe what we believe, mm-hmm. capped off by Joe Biden standing up and saying, trust me, I will get us out of this mess. Well, and hundreds of Democrats saying, I know Joe. Exactly. exactly. And I've had 20 years with the guy, 30 years with this guy, you know, known him since he was 30 years old. And he is what 
he appears to be. And that kind of endorsement of, you know, this is this is a personal relationship I have with the candidate. Mm -hmm. No one in Donald Trump's life, including his wife, is going to stand up and say that about Donald Trump. Melania Hanslappy, yeah. Mel- the, Melania no, Hanslappy, who, by the way, Trump. her calendar is open after yeah. the convention She's next not week. Doing anything. She's not doing jack shit for her no. husband for no. the for the campaign, and she doesn't want to be in the White House in January. No, she, she wants, wants to be back at Mar-a-Lago. She, she does, she, she or wants she wants to be, to be divorced. You know, yeah, well, there's the thing. I would like to be at Mar-a-Lago and divorced. That would be the goal <laughs> here. And well, the- she doesn't have to get a divorce to uh, live in New York. No, no, and no. you know, order out for the rest of her life and buy buy clothes. You know, she oh. can she doesn't have to be around Donald anymore. And one um, other um, uh, uh, shit take on the convention. I'll just steal steal from your TV husband Ely Mistel. Yeah, yeah, um, my TV husband who, Ely Mistel, right? <laughs> who, who on Tuesday or Wednesday was saying, "When does the Democratic convention start?" Right. He kept saying, "This convention is not for me." <laughs> no, this is oh a bunch another bunch of Republicans. Yeah, yeah. another bunch of Republicans. Oh, look, it's Colin Powell. That's great. He, he's he's interesting. And it just went on and on and on. And I understand that is not exactly what happened. It was not a, there were a whole bunch of other people and ideas and stories interspersed through there. And it was an incredibly broad spectrum of the Democratic Party, with the exception, frankly, of young people. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That was, a, yeah. that was a bad decision. I, I don't know if it'll cost them the election, but it was a poor decision to um, to consider that young means anyone under 60. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, there needed to be a whole bunch more young faces up there. But other than that proviso. Um, well, it, I think I think Joe Biden's granddaughter spoke to a lot of people who might have been watching young people who might have been watching. Uh, those granddaughters reminded me a lot of yes, our kids. Yeah. Well, that's, there, is that. there is that. Uh, the eye rolls and the yes, pop is good and cares about us and so forth. Yeah. Um, and, and I I. I don't want to make excuses because in some respects, what you say actually confirms uh, that something you said earlier, you know, the fact that conventions don't matter. There were not, there were not people that spend their day on Instagram watching this convention. No, no, no. no. Um, But they are watching, they are watching Kamala Harris dancing across the stage in her glitter rainbow jacket, which is on ads and Instagram and so forth. And Kamala Harris, that choice uh-huh. spoke to the Instagram generation of, oh, okay, all right, okay. we can now right. go with this. This yeah. is this is she looks like our heroes. And, and, and it was a convention yeah. designed to be that you could take it apart into a series of thirty second, one minute, and two minute ads. Mm-hmm. Right, it's, absolutely. It's, it's, it was it's, a it's, series of thirty second spots. Yeah. Absolutely, it was. And that's really smart. That's a very. It was smart really thing smart. I, I mm-hmm. also thought it was important that throughout the convention, Joe Biden and the idea of Joe Biden was surrounded by uh, a rainbow of competent and charming women. Yes. yes. Jill I, Biden. I actually, uh-huh. Michelle Obama, uh-huh. Hillary, Clinton. Hillary Clinton. I thought Hillary Clinton did a remarkable job on her speech she sitting did. in her living room. She and didn't s- drop the mic and say, told you so, and walk <laughs> away. So, <laughs> walk away. You know? She could, She certainly could have. She certainly earned that. Uh, and, and you know, she did use the word lobotomy about her former, not yeah. in her speech, but with, with uh, Joanne Reed. She said, no, I yeah. think my Senate colleagues, the Republican colleagues, with the possible exception of Mitt Romney, have all had a lobotomy yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's of a their souls, kind. of their of their conscience, of their character. <laughs> They've just had it all cut out. Well, as, um, as long as we're speaking of Senator Clinton, yeah. um, I should mention that she did appear on the Morning Joe program this morning. This morning, yes. And very graciously declined to mention what, that uh, what a vindictive, hypocritical asshole Joel Scarborough is. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was really nice of her. And I got to say, Scarborough retweeting Hillary Clinton's uh, quote, to remain silent is complicit, was <laughs> fucking hilarious. Considering, <laughs> considering that enforced silence over his own complicity in the rise of Trump is now baked into the morning Joe routine. No Honest one is allowed to mention. Soledad O'Brien today. Was Soledad trending. O'Brien. I was replied to like, her as well. Yeah. Yep. Well, she was trending for two reasons. She she picked a fight um, with Sarah uh, Long. Goodyear. 
long I year, long box. Long year? Whatever. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Over, over what Oh, I'm sorry, Goodyear is the tire company. Goodyear is the tire company. That, that this is Sarah Trump Longwell. Is using all over the place and yet wants to boycott. Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is the woman who works for the Bulwark. Right. Who basically right. said, uh, you know, yeah, well, I'll get to that in a minute. But, but Hillary Clinton um, showed remarkable grace. And Soledad O'Brien popped right in and said, look, is anybody going to talk about the fact that Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski basically helped Donald Trump get elected? And now they're well, just and, pretending and they never some, met the guy? I thought, I thought was, what was interesting was she said, someone needs to do a show yes. about Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski enabling Donald Trump to become president. And several people came back at her with, you know, there is a show. It's called The Professional <laughs> Left Podcast. Yeah. We're on every Friday. Yeah. Go ahead and download us. Yeah. Um, but it was – there's a um, – I, I I might not have put it in our notes. Oh, I did. No, I, I stand corrected. Um, and and uh, but Sarah Longyear, I'm going to say, um, has the same problem as Jennifer Rubin today. Yeah, yeah. And 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 because the problem with never Trumpers, broadly speaking, as they try to display that their newfound enlightenment about the state <laughs> of their own party, is that they cannot escape the gravity well of their own propaganda. Yes, that's they, right. They have they have so internalized the dirty hippie monster um, cartoon character of the left mm-hmm. that they can't stop saying it. Mm-hmm. So if it, it's like if I were to compliment Jennifer Rubin by saying, sure, she writes pretty good for a chick, you know? <laughs> You well, would no, never I, say that. No, of course not. But but it's like, and then get mad. I'm trying to be nice <laughs> and get all offended that you'd be offended by me saying for a chick you write really well. Yeah, and so, and here here she comes on Twitter saying this bulwark lady saying, you know, the Democratic Party's doing pretty well with the flag and faith stuff that they don't yeah. know anything about. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and Jennifer Rubin on Twitter yesterday said. The Democratic Party is now the party tough on Russia, one that embraces faith and wants to restore civic virtue. So basically, they swallowed all the good parts of the GOP and spit out the rest. No! And she got – and she and she wouldn't shut the fuck – so she did a whole column on it from which I now quote, This is now the party that embraces faith and people of faith, a far cry from previous years in which Democrats too often avoided anything that smacked of religion. Did she – not see the 2016 Democratic National Convention she, where I is, had to go on Twitter and apologize to my atheist listeners yes. and say, look, I understand how over the top it is to have William Barber and a choir of thousands up there praising God. Mm-hmm. And but this is the tent we all live in. Right. And the the black church is an essential part of it. And, and always has been. And always has been. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> And it is a well, place where people of faith and atheists and agnostics and Rastafarians and everybody. Yeah. The big tent of the Democratic Party is there for you. Well, and this and is the problem. She wasn't there. She didn't. No. She missed all that, I guess. Well, she, she yeah. didn't miss it. She was swallowed up by her own propaganda. Yeah. Because yeah. like most conservatives, for decades, Jennifer Rubin has defined faith as a three-way between her, <laughs> Jerry Falwell, and Bibi Netanyahu. <laughs> And she's defined Democrats as dirty, godless, commie hippies. Yeah, yeah. And that's how she. And she can't made her... see it anymore. She cannot well, see it anymore. Well, she, right. she's been regurgitating this bullshit for so long. She can no longer see it as bullshit. It's just her mother tongue. She doesn't know how to think any other way. It's gone into her brain. So all of these people who are trying, I understand, they're trying to compliment Democrats. Like, oh, you're not the godless whores I thought you were. Maybe you finally embraced Jesus. So no. If you bother to pay the slightest fucking attention, first of all, tough on Russia. I believe the containment policy was was created by a guy named Harry S. Truman. Right, right, um, right. So, so we can go down any one of the, what they have done. However, is marketed. They've taken a, a a party full of, and this is where Stuart Stevens comes in handy. Stuart Stevens, who will say, "No, it was all a lie." Mm-hmm. My, my party never believed this shit. They said they did. They used it. It was all just marketing slogans for morons. It was all just stuff they cooked up in a, in a room that sounded good. They never believed in deficits reduction or fiscal responsibility. They certainly never believed in Jesus. They never believed in family values. They never believed in character. So all the shit that we're on the left now getting credit for finally catching up on, first of all, has always been core to the Democratic Party. It's mm-hmm. just that Republicans mm-hmm. have decided they were much more moral than we were. And look, here's Jerry Falwell. Here's Pat Robertson to prove how moral we are. 
Mm-hmm. Like, no, mm-hmm. you're degenerates. You're hiding. Every time you open your fucking hole, you re-crucify Christ. Yeah. yeah. And they yeah. and this is who what their party is now. It's the racists and the evangelicals. And the overlap between them is about 75%. And Jennifer Rubin finally gagged on it. Yeah. And discovered yeah. that, oh my God, Democrats believe and, and I thought very effective. And I think this should always happen from now on. After every fireworks display, there should be a series of prayers. <laughs> and it was last time we switched over yeah. because we did not want to watch Rachel Maddow, Nicole Wallace, and Joanne Reed just roll over Brian Williams yeah. as oh. as they did four nights in a row. That was, we, that was kind of fun. That we wanted to watch the fireworks, so we switched over to C-SPAN so we could see all the fireworks. But uh, And they followed up with three prayers. Yeah. Uh, they had a Catholic priest who spoke about life. I mean, life inside the womb. I was like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know where you are? Um, yeah. But, you know, Catholic priest. They had a uh, rabbi, woman rabbi, and they mm-hmm. had a um, Muslim imam. imam. Yeah. From New York City, and all three of them gave prayers, and uh, yeah, that was the the benediction, right? And they were all really good prayers. And they were all it, really good prayers. It was yeah. like they're praying for uh, love and dignity, and and love and, and justice, and care for the poor, and yeah, yeah, and our environment, and you know, right? You monsters! Democratic values, you monsters! Right? Yeah. You monsters! <laughs> well, um, drift class. We cannot leave this podcast without talking about um, Joe Scarborough's comment that uh, Joe Biden is Ronald Reagan. Yes. Well, this is where you and I, um, part of our mission, <laughs> part of our mission, as we have said uh, many times before, is to help listeners understand what's going on around them. We're, right. we're not going to give you and the kind of vocabulary news where yeah. we can't, we can't go through the bill of indictments against Steve Bannon and go through like, Oh yeah. Bye-bye. We're not lawyers. That's not what we do. What we what we are really good at is analyzing the media environment, the political environment, and telling you why things are the way they are, and probably what you can expect. We're our batting average is better than almost all Washington pundits, almost oh, yeah. all media pundits. <laughs> we for, can predict what's yeah. going to happen. And That's can, why we came up with the lifeboat idea and yeah. how they're going to climb in and try to sail away from Donald Trump and anything that's happened in the past six years. Yes. And so so failed Republican Congressman Joe Scarborough has a three-hour <laughs> show every morning that is extremely popular and very influential, and during which time he rules over it and, and basically no one's allowed to talk about. And he bullies everybody on that network, apparently. Yeah, yeah. And and he is he doesn't allow anyone to talk about the days when he was chummy chummy with Donald Trump and helped Donald Trump with this speech. And which him. is a tragedy. Yeah. I've said this before. He has the probably alone in this country. Mm-hmm. Joe Scarborough has a perspective on Donald Trump that no one else has having been connected to him personally yeah. for several years and was yeah. at, you know, spent Christmases with his kids at Mar-a-Lago before yeah. the escalator ride, you know, was, yeah. was there and, you know, at the hip, talked to him, talked to him personally, had breakfast with him, whatever. Gave him millions Gave him speech of free publicity. Yeah. Um, and a lot of free publicity. And it was all a joke until he won and then turned on Joe Scarborough and his wife. And, well, and you can Trump see this. Trump kept their secret. And Trump yeah. kept their relationship secret for them. Probably there was a quid pro quo involved. There almost certainly was. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so he has this unique perspective. It would be a fabulous book. Joe Scarborough is not unintelligent. No, he would but- He could write a really good book about if he was honest with himself and willing well, to take the hit to his reputation and say, yes, I was really, really wrong about this. There's, and, there's the problem. You know, he, there's he, the problem. he apparently can't do it. And that's a tragedy. He is, he yeah. is a coward. And so <laughs> because he is a coward and because he wants to hang on to his three hour block in the morning and be the, the, the loud declarative voice of true conservatism and keep his gig at the Washington post and keep his influence at his network and all those things intact. He has, convinced himself that allowing anyone to discuss Joe Scarborough pre 2016 Mm -hmm. would destroy him. So he's Mm -hmm. not going to allow it. And when you, I've said this before to all budding revolutionaries, if you want to win your revolution, you're going to have to one day control the cameras Mm -hmm. because Joe Scarborough Mm -hmm. is allowed to make up any bullshit he wants about his own past 
because no one on the on the network is going to contradict him. None of his guests are going to say otherwise. And he can just look into a camera three hours a day, five days a week and lie to you mm-hmm. about Donald Trump is really a Democrat, which he has said roughly a thousand times in the last two years, three years. He's really a Democrat. He's really a big spending Democrat. And jo- and, and uh, Joe Biden is Reagan. Wow. And that's how that is the future. That is the template for political conversation that he is trying to build and and is going to try to force every one of us to live in that Mm -hmm. the the parameters of our discussion is that donald trump was never really a republican he was never really conservative he was a big spending liberal he was a democrat and joe biden is is reagan-esque and that's and that's how joe scarborough is going to survive this and i found it fascinating to to sort of track the arc of his complete capitulation his complete unwillingness to come to terms of his own past with Stuart Stevens. As I, yeah. as I mentioned to you, I've listened to 17 15 different hours of students. Yeah. Stuart. I am telling you, he has his phone in his pocket yeah. doing dishes, doing laundry, taking care of the cats, doing his rounds as drift class does. Uh-huh. And you have listened to 11 hours of Stuart going, Stevens. Going back to 2016, going back to yeah. him and David Axelrod, and in the Axe Files, and he's been Stuart Stevens has been on a lot of shows over the last four years. And he well, arc- he's a well-known Paul in Washington, and that's not un- that's not well, surprising. But and he writes yeah. he writes actual fiction books, and he's written screenplays, and he's an accomplished person. He's skied to the North Pole, and he has an interesting history. His parents are interesting. He has an interesting story to tell, and he has been arguably the most successful high-end political consultant in modern history, mm-hmm. certainly in the modern mm-hmm. Republican Party. He got more Republicans elected than anybody. So, And he's got made a really good living doing it. And he has basically, uh, this week, he was interviewed in, um, I think, the, the Washington Post. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. But it was the headline was, he's destroyed conservatism, the Republican case against Trump's GOP. And he goes through and says, as he said many times before, it's all a lie. It was all a lie. It was all bullshit. And there's stuff that he won't talk about and stuff that he will talk about. But he is trying really hard to say, look, I never knew. I should have known. I was on the I I was I was the 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 hit man. I I was a hired gun. That's I just like to win. I didn't bother to pay attention to whether or not the party was going in the shitter or not. I just like to win. Now, if you track him from four years ago, which is what I I spent my spare time doing the last couple of weeks. In other um, words, how did he react to the rise of Donald Trump? Yeah, how did he well, react to Trump actually winning the nomination and then the election? Starting right? four years ago in the, you know, 2016, 2015, that period of time, Stuart Stevens is saying both parties are flawed. Both parties have problems. Ryan Priebus did a great job with this autopsy and Trump is definitely going to lose huge. He's just going to get slaughtered. There's no way he can win. It's just over, over, over. And then you can see this sort of like it gets like scarier. Well, he's not really going to win. I mean, you know, it's it's Hillary's flawed and both parties are still bad, but the Republican Party's never going to nominate. Oh, they nominated him. Well, he's never going to win. Oh, shit, he won. And that's when he took the turn. That's when he said, I'm not voting for the guy. I'm not going to support the guy. And as all of the people he helped get elected slowly turned and became Donald Trump's footstools, he went, wait a minute, what the fuck is going on here? And that's when he caught up to where liberals were 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And what sets him aside, what set, puts him, uh, sets him aside from Joe Scarborough, who's gone through exactly the same kind of arc, is he was willing to say, I fucked up. I was wrong. My party has never believed in any of this shit. And holy crap. And, and he was willing to sort of grudgingly say, the hardest thing in the world is to admit that these guys were right about us all along. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Joe Scarborough is never going to admit that right. ever. And, and that's the problem because he could where, – where Stuart Stevens can give you an overview of the GOP going back you know, 40 years. Mm-hmm. Joe Scarborough can give you an overview of Donald Trump going back he 20 years. He can give years. you a granular view of Donald Trump. He can. Right, and he right. won't do it because he is right. part of that story. And the part of the story is Joe Scarborough using his three hours in the morning to pimp Donald Trump relentlessly. Give him all the free air to time keep he wants. It, probably to keep his relationship with his girlfriend secret. Yeah. Beyonce, wife, that whatever. Joe yeah. Scarborough does not have the balls to admit. So he yeah. makes he is doing the natural. This is what we this is why I, I say that Republicans are trapped by their own habits, their own their mm-hmm. own propaganda, even if they're pretend to be enlightened. Joe Scarborough knows that Republicans like him survive 
with sketchy pasts by lying about it. Yeah. By pretending it never happened. It's what saved the GOP after the collapse of the Bush administration. Year after it, year after year. They just, they just yeah. pretend the past never happened. And when you have yeah. a goddamn TV network who's willing to back up your lie and help you pretend the past never happened, you can get away with this shit. Yeah. And, and, well, it, and it, I think that's what's going to happen next week with the RNC. Yes. Is the RNC is going to be a panel with Lou Dobbs. Yeah. That that the RNC is going to broadcast Fox News as part of their convention. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. what I foresee happening is it's good. You know, you're going to have Fox News on MSNBC. Yeah, it's it's Fox News on parade. It's going to be right. and it's, right. it's going to be. And um, I do want to add one thing about the convention before we move on to the and I, I'm going to, to the dip, news roundup because we're running yeah. out of time. Yeah, I, I'm dipping into Charlie Pierce. He had a wonderful, um, wonderful call today, um, which he describes Joe Biden is taking a very big gamble. Mm-hmm. 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 And. Joe Biden is taking a very big gamble. He is betting that the same country that elected this racist madman and refused to stand up to him for three and a half years will vote to return to decency. Yeah, yeah. And that's a big gamble. First of all, I agree with Brother Pierce. You should never have to vote for decency. Right. <laughs> that should just be like, that should yeah. be the water in which we swim, the air that we breathe. And I think the answer is, and this is, again, something that you and I talk about and liberals talk about and that nobody in the media is willing to acknowledge really kind of at at a, to understand what the consequences of this idea are. We are not one country. We are two very different, mutually hostile countries strapped in the same union. There are people, 60 million Americans who want to destroy the rest of us just to make us go away because we're a constant reminder of what failures they are as human beings and as citizens. Well, I think, and I think it goes deeper than that. There is also an institutional structure to the United States government mm -hmm. that gives that other side 50 percent plus yes of the field yeah no matter what and 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 that has to change we need structural change in this country to stop pretending that i mean i was looking at a series of maps for junior dude this week about uh you know the the going 100 miles from either coast and mapping that out and coloring that in and that is the same population as basically the rest of the country. Yeah. Yep. And when you think in coastal elites, it's not coastal elites. It's half of America lives within 100 miles of ocean. Ocean. <laughs> That's, or urban, that or urban really matters. is yeah. true. And, yeah. and I say that as someone who's not 100 miles from the ocean. You know, no. we are in the cornfield. Uh, and yet with the Senate and the way the the – Electoral college works, these vast states with very few people in them have an inordinate say in who is elected president. And that has got to change. And an inordinate say over what gets through the Senate. Right. Yeah. And that has to change. And so and I and I want to go back to what you said about the election and, you know, turning from indecency to decency. Mm Mm-hmm. I have, and I know I'm not alone in this. In fact, I know I'm I'm just a very small part of a very large movement because I've seen it since the Women's March of being so distraught and having such PTSD over election night 2016 that I will never, ever forget. Nope. And then having PTSD over kids in cages and having PTSD over Charlottesville and having PTSD over my health insurance hanging from John McCain's thumb. I am scarred by this. Yep. And so hoping for Joe Biden is just like, okay, let's try. Yeah. Yeah. We try. I think I think your TV husband said that today too. Yeah. You know, for all of all of the faults and all the screw ups, et cetera, the Repu- the Democratic Party tries. We at least yep. we try to help people. The Republicans next and week. And we're gonna we're try gonna watch- to win this election and we're gonna crawl over broken glass to do it. And next week we're gonna watch what happens. To a party that doesn't try, doesn't even yes, try, to help, right. doesn't even try to govern, doesn't, doesn't give a shit about trying to have an inauguration cake of their own, as you yeah. said this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and they just, yeah, it's going to yeah. be bad. No, no platform this year. No, no platform. Unbelievable. Uh, okay. Shall we move I'm, on? I to just started news? crying, and I didn't mean to do that. Well, I can do a bunch of these, and then you can just, you know, tap the microphone, and tell me to shut up. <laughs> okay. Susan Collins has been one of the only GOP senators to speak out against uh, DeJoy's 
systematic gutting of the USPS, U- U.S. Parcel Service, U.S. Postal Service. Fun fact that she fails to mention is that she wrote the bill 15 years ago that crippled the agency to begin with. Unbelievable. Isn't that fun? Isn't that a fun uh, thing? I can, I'm ready. The SDNY has indicted Steve Bannon al- along with four others in a giant multi-million dollar fraud in <laughs> funding the fake border wall. GoFundMe type conspiracy where they defrauded hundreds of thousands of investors who donated to privately fund a border wall, but instead funded these men's lavish lifestyles. That would explain why Trump hurriedly fired the SDNY AG, which explains this story from June. President Trump removed Jeffrey Berman from the SDNY from office and, uh, Remember when Barr announced the termination Sunday and Berman said, uh, no, nope. you didn't. <laughs> nope. I'm not, nope. I'm, I'm not fired. Resigning. I'm not leaving. I'm not resigning. Uh, bite my ass. Yeah. Bite my ass. And mm-hmm. then uh, actually, you know, Berman is a real hero because he insisted on that a career prosecutor who was working with him be his replacement. And yeah. that's why we're where we are that's today. Right. Mm-hmm. And this is why now. Steve Bannon is a coffee boy. <laughs> I, he, you know, I, I'm sad, but I really didn't know him. Though I wasn't for this, I, I didn't know anything. I yeah, don't. the saga. I, I do try to in these very dark days mm-hmm. hold on to the fact that there are real heroes working yep. inside the government trying to hold the shit together until someone can come along who will quit trying to destroy it. And and, and I, let's not sleep on Sally Yates's speech either. By the way. Well, yeah. and let's not sleep on the fact that none of this would ha- be happening were it not for the fact that tens of millions of people voted in 2018 right. to give the House of Representatives to the Democratic Party. Right. To give us a voice. We we can't control anything. We can't, you know, pass anything because Mitch McConnell will kill it the minute it lands on his desk, which is one of those circular arguments I get into. Not an argument, but sort of a reminder when people just shake their fists like, well, do Democrats control the White House? No. Do they control the Senate? No. Then what do you want them to do? Mm-hmm. I want them mm-hmm. to you know, make a big, impotent gesture. <laughs> well, okay, well, let's do that. But let's also, while we're making gestures, let's all remember that another election is coming up and we can really sweep all these people away. Um, the state of Michigan will pay about $600 million to victims of the contamination of Flint's tap water. The New York Times reported Wednesday. The, the children who are victims of lead in their water. Thanks yep. to deregulation and incompetence. So and Republicans, let's, yeah. let's be clear about <laughs> let's that. Let's not forget. So uh, Rand Paul has proposed cutting days, hours, and the number of employees for the post office. He's also suggested that rural voters, uh, of which there are zero in Kentucky, apparently, yeah. uh, don't need mail every day. No, no. Well, up in Galt's Gulch, where he lives, um, along with his libertarian friends, they just have things flown in by pigeon and Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's all. Mm-hmm. Of libertarian, it's a libertarian paradise where Rand Paul lives. No post office is necessary. Uh, the Trump re-election effort has so far spent more than one billion dollars since 2017 to ensure Trump remains in office for another four years. That's one billion dollars. So he's far. spending a lot of that money on YouTube, which is yes. kind of funny. I yeah. In states, no like one watches Iowa. the ads on YouTube. Come on. More than 1.1 million people filed for unemployment last week after dipping below a million the week before. Jobless claims have come in over the 1 million mark for 21 out of the last 22 weeks, and the unemployment rate remains around 10% five months after the coronavirus pandemic began. Yeah, and and all around us, we're seeing the effects of that. Um, a federal judge rejected Donald Trump's efforts to block the Manhattan District Attorney from obtaining eight years of his tax returns, dismissing arguments that Cyrus Vance's grand jury subpoena was, quote, wildly overbroad and issued Quote, in bad faith. Trump praised supporters of the QAnon Internet conspiracy theory because, of course, he did. They like him very much. I appreciate that. They like me very much. It sounds like good to me. The the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence confirmed that the Mueller report, what the Mueller report refused to do, that Russiagate was not a hoax. All the Republicans involved lied, starting with Bill Barr, which is why the Senate Intelligence Committee made criminal referrals of Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner, Steve Bannon, and other Trump allies to federal prosecutors in 2019. I'm telling you. And and I do love the nickname that uh, T-Pain has for Trump Jr., which is Traitor Tot. Yeah. 
Yep. White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany declined to say whether Trump would accept the election results if he lost, saying Trump has been clear that he will see what happens in November. On Monday, Trump told reporters that the only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be carried out of there. He will be. I, I, I'm I'm waiting for him. From his to just... bunker, very carefully protected by the Secret Service. I, I yeah. As there's, I recall, there's... Mm-hmm. Uh, Pat Buchanan made some promise that the the minute he was elected president, he would turn to Bill Clinton and say, you're under arrest, Mr. Clinton. Yeah. yeah. I really hope Joe Biden. I don't (laughs) let's let's face it. If slash when Donald Trump loses, he is not going to attend the inauguration. Oh, no, he's already said he's not going to attend. I'm going to sit home. I'm going to bitch. And he's going to be on Twitter. Yeah. Here's the thing. I I do want to say this. It's a little bit of a sidebar, but Mayor Richie Daly of Chicago was all powerful until he announced he was no longer going to be mayor. And then all of his clout sort of evaporated like pixie dust because it was all based mm-hmm. on a relationship to him. Mm-hmm. I'm not so sure that Donald Trump is going to be continuing to be an influence in the GOP after he loses, mm-hmm. if he loses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that people are just going to be real happy to have him, you know, Off one hour backs, on Fox, right? you know, once right. a week, twice a week on Fox News. And he'll just sort of, you know, go the way of uh, Eric Bowling. You know, one of these days, he'll, he'll show up on my local channel 20. Like, right, what, right. A Sinclair station is going to run Donald Trump and America. The syndicated, held the syndicated show. Yeah, right, yeah. right. But I, I really think that at, at some the, the minute the dam breaks, no one's going to want to take his song. Well, call. they're they're not going to know him anymore. Donald yeah. Trump who? Yeah. yeah. Well, and 68 percent of Americans say they're embarrassed by the U.S. response to the coronavirus. At least 20 states plan to sue the U.S. Postal Service and Louis DeJoy, seeking to reverse operational changes made without first seeking approval from the Postal Regulatory Commission. Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump suggested that the FDA should approve an untested experimental coronavirus treatment, despite no public data or peer-reviewed research showing that the experimental botanical extract, oleandrin, has ever been tested in animals or humans for its efficacy against COVID-19. Trump said the extract should be marketed as a dietary supplement or approved as a drug cure for COVID-19. You know, like Trump steaks. It's Trump and, water. It'll be Trump virus. And and the other problem is, is that the oleandra plant is it's, poisonous. It's poison. Yeah. So <laughs> any confusion about that? Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. S- Senator Bill Cassidy, who, by the way, the day before his COVID test said everyone should vote in person, yeah. has tested positive for COVID-19. <sighs> Oopsie. The Susan B. Anthony Museum has rejected Donald Trump's pardon of Susan B. Anthony. Yeah. And and so have most of Americans women. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and and Goodyear, we didn't get much time to talk about the Goodyear tire. I found out today that Trump's NASCAR, Trump the Trump 2020 NASCAR car has mm-hmm. Goodyear tires. Yeah. You know, uh Air Force One and uh the Beast, the the SUV that Trump rides around in have Goodyear tires. Why he would attack Goodyear, a union shop in Ohio, the swingiest of swing states. Yeah, Yeah. with seventy-five days before the election. With well, because he has no memory. He is. I mean, this is this this actually is cancel culture. This is the president of the United States saying you shouldn't buy this thing because the the people that make it, I don't like them. And then and Hogan Gidley said, well, just because he said don't buy it, that doesn't mean it's a boycott. Yeah, uh, Hogan Gidley. Uh, Hogan. I think, I think Hogan went to law school. And I think, I'm think i pretty <laughs> sure he knows what he's saying is bullshit. But I, that's the thing. They all know what they're saying yeah. is bullshit. Um, meanwhile, in local news, the Springfield School District 186 superintendent has tested positive for COVID-19. She's a very nice woman. She works very hard for our schools. And I'm sure she's taken every precaution you can imagine. Uh, but she tested positive this week. And because of this, the school board president has also self-quarantined, showing and, yeah. pretty definitively that opening schools now is a really stupid idea. Statues commemorating Stephen Douglas and Pierre Menard will be removed from the Illinois State Capitol grounds. Got to think that Lincoln being buried here in everything town being Lincoln branded has a lot to do with why this is being handled with absolutely zero drama. Yes. <laughs> Pierre Menard was Illinois' first lieutenant governor, and he was one of the largest slave owners in the state of Illinois. Yes, he was. 
Uh, WAND reports that the Office of the Architect Board voted Wednesday to remove statues of Stephen Douglas and Pierre Menard from the Illinois State Capitol grounds due to their racist pasts. The board took up the request from Illinois House Speaker Michael Madigan, and Madigan made the call for the statues to be removed, and the board approved it, and they're gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they also approved moving the statue of Martin Luther King that's currently off the grounds onto the Capitol grounds. And uh, the awesome. removal the removal will take two to three months because they have to figure out how they're going to dismantle these. They're, you know, they're cemented in and screwed. Yeah. It's going to take, uh, especially with COVID, it's going to take a little bit. But uh, no controversy about this. No. Let me put it that way. And, and here's some yeah. good news. Uh, you, the University of Illinois saliva-based COVID-19 test has received FDA emergency authorization. Um, a saliva-based COVID-19 test created by researchers at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, or Shambana, as we know it here. Shambana. Yep. Has received authorization from the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA emergency youth authorization was granted to the U of I's test on the basis that it performs at least as well as a recently approved saliva testing protocol developed at Yale University, setting a precedent that could allow other labs to follow suit. Way to go, Shambana. Shambana and... Uh... Now Donald Trump apparently wants to uh, tell the FDA that they don't have to approve COVID-19 tests anymore. Yeah, that which is... It's, anybody wants to go into the COVID-19 testing, right. you know, you can get a big government loan. And mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're a friend of the Donald, we'll take care of you. I mean, it's... It's, seriously, they're they're trying to make it the Wild West for COVID testing. Right. Which is just what this country So needs. that the cabinet, you know... That voted 19 to 1 to separate children from their parents at the border, uh, you know, can all make a buck because that's why they're there. I, I hear that the, the most infallible COVID test is having a hooker pee on you in a Russian <laughs> hotel room. So, I don't know. It I makes just you hear immune that. for life. Yeah. It does. Oh, it does. God. So, I'm just saying. Just saying. Thank you, Drift Glass. You're welcome, Blue Gal. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitties, plural. We're back to cats, and it's McKeith and Jenny. McKeith and Jenny were uh, very smart. They were rescued the same day, one from the front door and one from the back door of our oh. listener's house. So you wouldn't notice that they're from the same litter. <laughs> hmm. They seem to be exactly the same age and young and... Uh, extremely attached to one another. Go figure. <laughs> and McKeith is known as Mac, and uh, Jenny is his little sibling, we think. Uh, and of course, Mac and Jenny eat freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured. Freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Mac and Jenny. They are lovely young cats at our Facebook page or website. You can send your Internet Kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal, Go, postal unions. unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. God bless the post office. We are on your side. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it's a labor of love. We do love you guys. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You support both of us with a contribution. Yes, you do. And uh, we appreciate it. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, our PayPal, postal address information, merch, all the good stuff. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. I want to just do a quick shout-out to my sister, in uh, the Pittsburgh area, I got an email address, e email from her, excuse me. I got an email from her this afternoon that her cancer scan uh, is clear and there is oh. no growth. And uh, we she's, are so she's, grateful. She's amazing. She's, she's amazing. been uh, dealing with this for years and um, it's taken away a lot from her, but she's hanging in there. And uh, we're very, very grateful to the doctors and scientists and 
everyone doing that cancer moonshot, you know, mm-hmm. the, the yep. Joe Biden cancer moonshot can't happen fast enough. Yep. So um, very great. Have a lot to be grateful for this week. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are really looking forward to next week when they can sleep through the Republican National Convention, just like Wilbur Ross. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.